Welcome to day seven of the 2017-2018 NBA season. I hope you are all having a fantastic day so far, just like Ben Simmons had a fantastic game yesterday against my Pistons. Not gonna lie, I was a bit hurt when my Pistons lost to the Sixers yesterday because for the past few years, the Sixers have been that team that was just embarrassing to lose to. However, I was even more embarrassed when the Sixers went up by 21 points early in the second quarter against my Pistons. I kind of played long and hard at that point about just turning off the game and watching something else instead, but I endured it mainly because at that point, I just wanted to continue and watch Ben Simmons play. I find it crazy how little everyone is talking about Ben Simmons so far. There has been a lot of hype around Lonzo Ball after every single game. People say something about Lonzo Ball, but Ben Simmons has virtually gone untalked about so far this season. Well, not anymore. Can we just hand him the rookie of the year now, please? He had his first triple W yesterday, 21 points on 8 of 11 shooting, 12 rebounds, and 10 assists. On the year so far, he's averaging 17 points, 10.8 rebounds, and 7 assists per game. Like I said, can we please just hand him the Rookie of the Year award already? What was most impressive about him though is just how, I won't say great, but how good of a leader he already is. The Sixers are up 21, and it's easy to look good when your team is winning by so much. So for a young team, the thing you are prone to doing is blowing away those big leads and that's exactly what the Sixers did last night. The Pistons clawed back into the game a few times bringing within two or three points. Every time that happened I thought my Pistons were going to get the win at that point because the Sixers are such a young team and young teams typically panic when things like this happen. But every time the Pistons got back into the game it was Ben Simmons who calmed the storm for the rest of the guys and made a play. It's rare to see a rookie with this much poise. And then, can we also just talk about how much of a cheat code the guy is? There were times the Sixers were playing him at the four last night, meaning that the Pistons either had to guard him with Anthony Tolliver or John Luer. I don't even have to tell you that those guys just can't check Ben Simmons. The mismatches this guy creates are insane. And then on the defensive end, his length at 6'10", guarding your point guard, makes it hard for your point guard to create plays that they would normally make. He's a he's a cheat code. Great game for Ben Simmons as he gets his first NBA win last night, 97 to 86. 21 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists, first career triple double, and there are going to be a lot more of those. And Beat was on the receiving end of a bunch of those assists as he dropped 30 points and nine rebounds while Andre Drummond had 14 points and 14 rebounds for Detroit. Well, Giannis had the worst game of his season so far. It was bound to happen eventually. It's just not humanly possible to keep scoring in the high 30s while shooting nearly 70% from the field like he had been doing. That's why he had to almost come back down to earth yesterday and drop a humble 32 points on only 62% shooting from the field. So far, that's considered to be a bad game. For Giannis, 32 points, 14 rebounds, 6 assists, and more importantly, a win for the Milwaukee Bucks. I said it enough already this season. You guys already know Giannis is the definition of flames. Kemba Walker had 15 points, 6 assists, while Howard grabbed 22 rebounds for Charlotte, 103 to 94 was the final score. I may have underestimated the Grizzlies a bit heading into the season. I thought this would be the year they finally fall off. And I know it's only been three games into the season so far, so it's way too early to be making any final judgments about teams, but so far they have beaten the Warriors and now they have also beaten the Houston Rockets. That has to say something. And they beat the Rockets the hard way by going on a 20 to two run in the fourth quarter. Check this out. The Rockets only scored two points in the final six minutes of the games. That's one of the best offenses in the NBA. Limited to two points over a six minute span. That is some incredible defense. And that's also the type of defense you play that will put a team on edge. And that must have been exactly what happened to James Harden yesterday as with three minutes left to go in the game. Mario Chalmers fell to the ground tripping James Harden who at that point just lost it and was ready to square up with Mario. And it's pretty rare to see Harden get that upset. After the review, both players were charged with Tex and Harden also called for the offensive foul. 98 to 90 was the final score. Gasol 
with another high scoring game dropping 26 on the night while Harden didn't shoot the ball well, only 8 of 20 from the field for 22 points and Eric Gordon shot the same 8 of 20 from the field for 27 points. I was kind of wondering when the Warriors would get a win like this, in the first half they were giving the Mavericks hope. Mavs only down by 3 playing at home at the half, if you're Dallas you couldn't help but to feel pretty good about the position you were in until the second half started and you got hit with an overwhelming dose of reality as the Warriors completely on the third and the fourth quarter to take the blowout 133 to 103 win. Stephen Curry couldn't really hit a three last night, but he literally hit every other shot he took, literally, to finish with 29 points, eight assists, and four steals. KD did his usual thing with 25 points, eight rebounds, six assists. And I just don't know why some people were chipping out that the Warriors started out this year one and two, like there was something wrong with them. It's the Warriors. Come on now, you know better than that. I'm not gonna say my theory from yesterday where I said the Suns players had given up on Earl Watson to get him fired is confirmed from this game or anything since it was against the Sacramento Kings, but no Watson, no Bledsoe, no drama, and no 40 point loss for the Suns this time. Heck, the Suns actually got a win this time and only allowed the Kings to score 115 on them. That's still a lot of points, but hey, at least it's a step in the right direction. 117 to 115, the final score. Devin Booker led the way for Phoenix with 22 points, five assists. Mike James added 18 points and seven assists in place of Bledsoe and Josh Jackson came off the bench this time last night and had the best game of his career so far with 15 points, five rebounds, two steals. Speaking of rookies coming off the bench though, what you do in Sacramento? Start this man Fox already, 19 points, five rebounds, four assists, three steals for him off the bench, seriously starting to think he is just about to be John Wall 2.0. Speaking of John Wall though, he had his worst shooting night in a very long time yesterday, only shot 3 of 13 from the field. On the other hand, Nikola Jokic had his best shooting game of the season so far with 29 points, a 9 of 14 shooting, and a perfect 3 of 3 from deep. Speaking of Jokic though, strange thing happened with like 30 seconds left in the game. The Wizards called for a timeout, and on his way to the bench, Jokic bumped into Scott Brooks and was called for a technical foul. That's something you don't do. No matter what's going on between the players or teammates, that's something you don't do to a coach. It's like me calling a coach a certain name, but hopefully he'll apologize. That's what John Wall said about it, and Jokic did apologize and said it was an accident after the game. Scott Brooks said he also thought it was an accident and knew Jokic didn't mean to do it. Mike Malone said the same thing. It was just one of those unfortunate things that happened that hurt the Nuggets' chance of winning as they fell in the final minutes 109 to 104. John Wall still had 19 points and 12 assists despite his off night shooting the ball. Jokic though, I think he needs to learn to be a bit more selfish when he has the hot hand. He blamed himself for the loss yesterday saying, I scored and we lost. Maybe it's better for me not to score. I think he should have scored more. When you have the hot hand, you got the hot hand. I get that you're past first, but even when you look at a guy like John Wall, if he has the hot hand, he's not afraid to go out there and drop. 50. And if you're torching defenses, it's only going to open up more passing opportunities to set your teammates up for easy buckets since the defense will be so focused on you. Don't be afraid to score Nikola Jokic. The Spurs still haven't lost without their best player. And can we take a minute to acknowledge the fact that DeJounte Murray, the Spurs young point guard, has been playing really well his first three games so far. I know the Spurs consider him to be their point guard of the future, but the future might be a bit closer than we all think. 16 points, 6 assists, and get this, 14 rebounds for Murray last night. I saw that 14 rebounds and I had to quadruple take to make sure I wasn't seeing things. Then I checked his stats from the rest of the game and noticed he had 10 rebounds in his last game against the Bulls too. I'm starting to think He's just a really good rebounder for a point guard. He's averaging 13 points, a 56% shooting from the field, just under 5 assists, and basically 10 rebounds per game in 25 minutes per game. How the Spurs get these players and make them so good? Only they know, but watch out for this kid, guys. He's gonna be real special in a couple of years. Spurs win 101 to 97 over the Toronto Raptors, and Rosen had. 28. The Hawks lose once again. No real surprise here. 104 to 93 was the final score. Still no white side from Miami either as he is out with a bruised knee. Josh Richardson had a good game with 21 while Wayne Ellington was on fire off the bench hitting 6 of his 8 triples for 20 points. John Collins needs more minutes for Atlanta. There is no reason not to give him more minutes. Like you'd seriously rather give those minutes to Mike Muscala? Please. 
get him out of here. Collins had 14 points and 11 rebounds in only 18 minutes. That wraps up all the action for today. You guys can go vote for the player of the day by following the link down in the description box below. Just remember, the only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day. And yesterday, you guys selected Andrew Wiggins and his 27 points, seven rebounds and game winner as your player of the day thank you guys so much for watching make sure you stay tuned for the daily nba news coming out later today and i'll see you guys then peace